And by the way, about qatal and zina, you know, murder and adultery or fornication, these two are actually in the Quran, they're considered equal. In some sense, they're considered equals. Because sometimes Allah mentions one first and then the other, and sometimes Allah mentions the other first and then the first. He flips the order of them around. Which, what does that suggest? A or B, B or A, doesn't even matter, they're equal in crime. One is a murder of one's body and the other is the murder of one's soul. And that's what that is. You know, one when you kill someone physically, the other you kill someone spiritually. This is this is qatal and zina. This is qatal and zina. Okay. So now, if this person can fix themselves, then look at what Allah does. He says, "Faulaika for those people, yubadilu Allahu sayyatihim hasanat." Allah will replace all of their evil deeds and convert them into good deeds. If they can make tawbah to Allah, if they can go back to Allah and apologize, if they can revitalize their faith, come back and make a new commitment to Allah again, and from then on get their act together, from then on get their act together, then Allah will take all of their evil deeds, maybe they have a mountain of evil deeds that is going to crush them in hellfire on the, on the Day of Judgment, and He takes that mountain of evil and He converts it into a mountain of good. Now there's a difference guys, between taking the evil and erasing it, getting rid of it. And there's a big difference between that and taking the evil and converting it into something good. This is an, like an unusually, overwhelmingly colossal act of love and care from Allah. Allah is telling the people, now understand why is that tied to everything else we've been talking about. The passage was about people Allah has special love and care for. Who starts thinking that Allah will not care for them or love them anymore? People who make big mistakes. Now Allah says about the people who big mis make big mistakes, yes, they will be getting terrible punishment if they still make those mistakes. Not the people who made those mistakes. And the people who have made those mistakes, and then they learn this, even those people, do they have hope still? Yes, not just hope, they have incredible hope. Perhaps they can be in a position better than anybody else now, because if they went that, that far down the road of darkness, and then they still decided that they're gonna come back to Allah, and apologize and not lose their hope and fix themselves and make themselves better people, then Allah will take that entire history of evil and turn it into a history of good for them. SubhanAllah. How, how do you even understand that as justice? This is just love. This is way beyond justice. This is just love from Allah. And so He says, وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا And Allah has always been forgiving, extremely forgiving. Always been full of love and care. وَمَنْ تَابَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا And whoever does turn back and then there onwards acts righteously. This is the next category. I don't want to get into the balagha of the ayah, the linguistics of the ayah too much with you guys. But I do want to share like one important point here. You know in the previous it was وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا He did the right thing and amal was emphasized. And this time, وَمَنْ تَابَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا And whoever repented and acted righteously, this is actually other people. Now let me explain that in simple language to you. There are people who did some pretty terrible things. When they repent, don't they have a lot of guilt? So they're gonna go out of their way to try to make up for it. Which is why the word amal is additional. But then when people hear this ayah and they say, well, uh, I haven't done shirk, and I haven't done murder, and I haven't done zina. So, but I, so does that mean I don't get a mountain of awesomeness? Because they get more than me. So maybe I should... Uh... <laughs> no. Why can't you do this in the future? What's the door that in the ayah, in the ayah itself, what, what, what's the word that closed the door for you to be able to do this in the future and then say, then I'll repent. Whoever does this, Whoever does this will definitely meet punishment. Meaning once you heard this, and then you decide to do this, oh, there's no way you're not getting punished. This was just for those who heard this, and before hearing this, they had already made a mistake. You understand? Once you hear this, the offer is closed. <laughs> Sorry. But then the rest of us are like, well, this is for people who made a mistake. I haven't made colossal mistakes. I made little mistakes in life compared to this. 
I made smaller mistakes. I lost my temper. I was mean to my friend. I, was, I did this, I did that. Maybe I stole something or you know, cheated at work or cheated on a test or lied to my mom or whatever. What about me? Can I have some good stuff? And so Allah says, yes, yes, whoever makes tawbah and does good deeds, فَإِنَّهُ يَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَتَابَ That's actually for real, sincere, genuine tawbah also. You don't have to make huge mistakes to do tawbah to Allah. Whatever tawbah you do is still a very powerful tawbah. That's why فَإِنَّهُ يَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَتَابَ Mataba is called مَصْدَرْ مِيمِي It's the strongest form of a word. Which means Allah is saying that even your repentance, you turning back to Allah and asking for forgiveness is serious to Allah. He doesn't take that lightly. So don't think that your tawbah is not as big. Well, that guy was really, he was a drug dealer. He killed like 20 people and then he made tawbah. Man, I'll never, my tawbah is never going to be that good. Allah says, yes it is. I still value your tawbah. You made tawbah from whatever addiction you have. You may tawbah from drugs, you may tawbah from alcohol, you may tawbah from pornography. You may tawbah from some other, not, not murder, less than murder. You may, that's also a good tawbah to Allah. فَإِنَّهُ يَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَتَابَ Then he says, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْرُ Now what, once you've made tawbah by the way, what happens next? This is so logical. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورَ once they make tawbah, they change. Once they turn back to Allah, they change. The people they hang out with are not the same anymore. People they talk to are not the same. The way they spend their days is not the same. So these are people that no longer bear witness to falsehood. They're no longer around false, evil company. They don't sit idly by when wrong things are happening and they're okay with it. Their friends go and go, go to a party, they're not gonna go anymore. Their friends from school go and get a drink, they're not gonna go anymore. They're not even going to say, I'll just get a Pepsi, I'll just sit with them. Nope. They're not going to do it anymore. They can't be around falsehood anymore. They just change their company. وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِ And if they do pass by some situation where there's lahu, Oh, wait, lahu? Have you heard this before? What's lahu? Useless talk and? Useless activity. When they pass by a situation, when they go to a party that was supposed to be a good gathering and then they notice there's lahu going on there, marru kirama, they walk, keep on walking in a dignified way. In other words, they don't make a scene. This is lahu everyone. I've already made tawbah. <laughs> they walk away. I need to go, I have an appointment. I really need to go. You don't have to tell them it's an appointment with Allah and you don't need to make istighfar. You don't have to say that. So I have an appointment, I need to get going. Inshallah. It was really great seeing all of you. Don't make a scene. You people of Lahu, you should make Tawbah. I made Tawbah last week. And you guys, no, no, no. They leave in a dignified fashion. Even Allah tells you, like, don't get, like, like don't turn into like this uh, righteous police soldier that goes around telling people, you need to better yourself, okay? Because Allah will be very angry. No, no, no. You go around people that are still doing Lahu, which you were doing before, but now if you are in that situation, you should leave, but leave in a dignified fashion. Kiraman. And not make people feel like evil and, you know, make, make them feel bad about what they're doing. <laughs> That's a silly story, but I, I don't know, I keep remembering it. It was in, it was in Queens College, I still remember. I, I did a couple of years in Queens College. And uh, um, there was this, our MSA room was pretty epic. All kinds of people in the MSA, you know, you got people, especially in New York, you got all kinds of people. So there's some guys that are like super hardcore, and there's some guys that are like not hardcore at all, they're barely Muslim or whatever. So there's a bunch of guys, they're outside in the student lounge and they're playing cards. They're just playing cards, you know. And crazy little waste of time, whatever. They're just killing time sitting in the student lounge. And there's this one guy who had just come from Pakistan, and he had one of those like kufis that have mirrors in them. You seen those? Yeah, one of those things. And he had like a mustache like a genuine box and mustache. And he's in the MSA too, he went to pray, and he came out and these Muslim guys are like playing cards. He goes, you people, you're not supposed to play cards. It's haram. You're not supposed to do that. It's evil. You're doing haram. You're going to burn in hellfire. And these guys look at him. <laughs> you go grow a beard. <laughs> <laughs> if you do see someone doing something stupid, what is the ayah saying? Walk by in a dignified fashion. If you want to give advice, that's not the place. They're in a zone right now, they're doing something right now, they're not interested in your advice right now. Maybe if you become friends with one of them, take them out for some pizza, and sit and talk, man, man you just, it's a waste of time, bro, just don't do that stuff. It's a, it's a time and place to do that. That's not the time and place. 
Somebody's house is not a time place. Some people are like such like da'wa warriors. You can't even invite them to a party. You invite them to a party, they start lecturing people. Like, auntie, chill out. So it's a party, let people eat their food. Nay, Allah ki baat honi chahiye. You will never get invited anywhere again. And people will think whoever makes tawbah to Allah becomes socially awkward. Allah is teaching us not to become socially awkward. You're gonna go be, you're gonna be in those situations, but don't make a scene. There's other times to do that. There are wiser times to do that. Don't dis, don't get yourself dismissed. You know, make, make smart decisions. So when you make tawbah, then you know you feel like you've turned back to Allah. So it agitates you that other people haven't turned back to Allah. So you want you want that so badly for them that you can't help yourself that you're constantly preaching. You can't do that. You can't do that. You sometimes have to walk away in a dignified fashion. And that in and of itself might be the biggest da'wah. How? That might be the biggest positive message you gave. Because those people think that anytime somebody takes Allah's deen seriously, they're judgmental, they don't respect us, they think we're scum, they think we're evil, they think we're going to hell. Well, how did this person walk away respecting us? How come they were so respectful and nice? I did, you know, people like that usually aren't nice. You know, people who, who, most people have an impression of religious people as not nice people as judgmental people, as condescending people. A lot of girls on campus that don't wear hijab, they think of girls that wear hijab as those, people, those girls always judging us. They're always looking at us a certain way. And even if you're not looking at them a certain way, there have enough, there've been enough girls with hijab that looked at them a certain way, that for them to say they're all the same. But why? Because those girls did not walk by in a dignified fashion. So we close the doors for da'wah ourselves. And Allah tries, is teaching us to open them. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورِ وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّهْوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامًا There's another lesson here in this ayah that's also important, a very real life lesson that you and I have to learn. And that is that when you make tawbah from really bad evil deeds, then you have to learn to protect yourself so much. You know, zur and lahu is not, is not the greatest evil. Useless conversation is not the greatest evil. But the person has done what evils in the past? What kinds of evils have been mentioned previously? Murder, shir, zina, big stuff. This guy realizes after making tawbah that this is actually, you know what they call a gateway drug? Like you start small and you work your way up. So they realize that this useless company right now, it's harmless. It's not that, it was minimally harmful. But actually once I get into this, then shaitan will get me with a little bit more and a little bit more. A little bit more and a little bit more, I'll end up exactly where I used to be.